Hi, everyone. I am joined by the amazing Aaliyah Lovely. Aaliyah, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, So I'm going to start the episode by pulling a card. Um, This is something I started doing this season, and it's been really fun so far. Um, And it's from The Universe Has Your Back Deck. And so right now I'm just thinking about a message that needs to come through either for me or for you or for anyone listening. Oh, I create mindful moments throughout the day, reminding myself that I am love and miracles are natural. Mm, that's a pretty card. Is Wait, it Gabby yeah. Bernstein? Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, that's a really cool way to start the episode. Mm-hmm. I'm in need of that today. <laughs> Oh, really? Has it been hard to create those mindful moments for yourself? I think um, upon becoming a mom and then, you know, uh, like train, like this morning we were talking before the show started, we were talking about Mer- Mercury and retrograde. Uh, and and it, when you're in the midst of like kind of a lot of anxiety or chaos, or there's just kind of the hum and drum of life, or you're living in the middle of a pandemic, uh, there's loads of time that we devote towards our anxiety and our fear and what could happen and oh no this is this way and us projecting and you know forecasting but there are very little time devoted towards the mindful moments of like being able to calm us down recenter ourselves and so that is practice I am working on (laughs) oh yeah thank you for sharing that I think I do that too where even when I think I've actually been reflecting on this a lot, that even my rest is very busy (laughs) and Mm -hmm. the like self-care that I'm doing is actually maybe even creating more anxiety in my day. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. That's, I totally understand what that feels like. And it's trying to get, you know, get a hold of it before it runs off and, and getting into that space of going, you know what, I'm safe. I'm loved. I'm, you know, maybe those aren't, true for you, but it, like in some way, finding whatever affirmations feel good to you to bring yourself back to center. Mm, I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you're watching on video, you can see the very, very beautiful sign that's behind you. Um, <laughs> cause you're the host of the spiritual ship podcast. I am. Yes, I am. And Yay. producer and creative director and audio editor. <laughs> Maybe that won't be true by the time this airs, but for now it's a one woman show. (laughs) Wow. Well, congratulations. I really love your podcast. So it's thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. So I would love to hear about how you started the podcast and just how you started down this uh, like path that you're on. Well, it it's, it's funny because I started off just, you know, as a child, just very curious person. And so I have a lot of questions all the time. Um, And, you know, my mom always thought it was funny because I remember challenging her about our beliefs. Uh, I was raised very Christian and uh, she would, (laughs) I was kind of going at it with her back and forth about the dinosaurs. And I was like, well, when were the dinosaurs? And you said that this is when Adam and Eve was, but my, my teachers are telling me that you know, people didn't live during this particular time. And you're telling me that the year, the earth is 2000 years old. You know, it was just the kind of back and forth of feeling very much like something's not lining up here. And so being that kind of very curious kid, I found that in a lot of my uh, Christian sensibilities didn't align with what I internally thought was true. And so I had a hard time, you know, kind of, you know, going back and forth between what I was supposed to believe versus what I was questioning. And so I got in a lot of trouble (laughs) um, because uh, I was being just told a lot that, you know, you don't have faith and you need to have more faith. And I felt like my questions at the time, I didn't know what gaslighting was, but that, you know, in that sense, my reality didn't feel like mine. And so um, when I got older, uh, I I entered into this relationship with a, a very narcissistic type of person and narcissists get a bad rap because they're they're, you know, they're considered abusive and all those kinds of things. But, um, I think that having that type of personality around forced me to come into a place of reckoning with my self-worth. And so I can't talk so much shit about that toxic abusive relationship I was in because without it, I would not have been in a space to gather enough strength to leave 
and really reclaim who I am. Now, this is not to say go ahead and date a narcissist for a valuable lesson, <laughs> but um, as a result <clears throat> of that be, you know, being part of my path, um, I, it, it sparked a, a huge journey for me. It was because of that person that I ended up getting out of the church and, you know, actually becoming a very hot atheist and, you know, going from super, super Christian where I was worshiping God, you know, every day. And, and then to being someone that, that was like, nothing exists. And so, um, upon getting out of that relationship, it was me coming back to some sensibility of like, I know that there is something I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel like what it was when I grew up, like whatever, whatever that was. And it doesn't feel like there's nothing either. And so it set me on this path to just come into a place, a safe place to ask questions, a safe space to, um, entertain all different types of possibilities, you know, and, and that, I mean, over a long period of time, it was about five, seven years almost that I entertained lot, lots and lots of different things. And then I got into this place where it was to me very clear. And, and, in in that space, I got to create the spiritual shit podcast, uh, because I wanted there to be a place where everybody else could also entertain the questions that I was asking. And also my friends were like tired of hearing about all my weird experiences and stuff. So <laughs> there's that, um, because when I was a kid, I, I could see spirits. I could see ghosts. My dad also has that ability. And so does my grandmother. And so being in a Christian household, there was not a lot of room for those kind of experiences because they didn't align with our doctrine. And yeah. so, you know, I stayed kind of undercover for a long time about like, mm, well, I'm having this dream about grandpa. And he said this, or, um, my grandmother, when she came to me uh, seven, eight years ago, when she passed, uh, she told me it's a girl. Like the first thing she said out of, out of her mouth was it's a girl. And I was like, that's bizarre. I don't know who you're talking about. Everyone that year had boys. Um, so I was like, well, it can't be my cousin so-and-so and and it can't be my sister and it can't be so-and-so. Um, and then I have a a baby girl about eight months ago. So, you know, just stuff like that, little things that I was, I was entertaining and I wanted to be able to create community and safe space for, you know, being able to bring the information that I was learning and that I was, you know, interviewing other people about and the experiences that I was having. So that way the people could ask those questions too. I love that. And I love that you use the term gaslighting. It's actually never something I had identified, but when I was also, I didn't, my parents weren't religious, but they took me to church a lot. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. like kind of, um, and whenever I would ask a question, which like looking back was very valid because they would say things that were questionable (laughs) and they would always just say, have faith. Like that's like no questions, just have faith. Um, and I think that's also how we really get separated from our intuition and yeah. that voice inside of us that kind of tells us where to go. Yep. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That's such an important point because when we learn that what we're feeling is wrong or mm-hmm. that we're questioning is wrong, uh, we, we, I guess it becomes, it's, it's not a strength anymore. And so we've learned to kind of suppress it and we then default to asking other people, what do you think? Or how do you feel about that? Or Google, you know? Um, we've lost our internal uh, barometer for you know where to go, our internal compass. And I think the process of, of rediscovering that, for me at least, was the <laughs> essentially shedding of all of the people who are trying to keep me in a particular type of reality in order to find my own. Oh, wow. That must have been really challenging. Oh, extraordinarily. Um, my divorce was you know really tumultuous and it came at a really incredible time. I would say, um, we had just moved to New York and when I moved to New York, it was suddenly like, I found all these really weird people that were weird like me and that were able to entertain, entertain really weird things. And, you know, being in a, in a abusive relationship where someone is constantly telling you that your reality is wrong or whatever to get outside of that. It was like, wait a minute, I'm not crazy. And that realization, I mean, just knocked the whole house of cards down. And so it was a process obviously to get through, but the freedom and relief I felt afterwards, it, I was so thankful to just be out of that. And, but also thankful that that showed me, you know, essentially I would say, uh, incited the awakening that I had and gave me that space to say, never again, will I step into a situation where someone will make me feel like my reality is untrue. <laughs> Um, and gave me a voice to speak up for myself, which I didn't have before. I was always afraid, you know, it's very people pleaser of my firstborn child, want my parents to look, you know, the whole deal. And I got to the space where 
I was like, my voice is important too. And I should be able to say what I want to say, you know, like not obviously, you know, I don't want to like, Hey, you bitch, you know, <laughs> but I want to be in a space where I, f- I can feel comfortable questioning those things and ideas and, and be able to have open dialogue with someone. So it changed the way my relationships were, my friendships changed as a result of that. Um, and then my, you know, the tribe of people that I hung out with changed. And I started to find myself in this really supportive group of people who were open to trying medium readings and psychic and tarot cards and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And this was like five or six years ago before, I mean, I feel like in the last two years, it's really upticked with the 2020, but it was a little bit before that. And I just, it was just, like I said, this awakening of this process of like, I had this soft space to land after this really hard, crazy upset crap. And so, and I find that in life, we, we go through those types of cycles where we go through a shedding or we go through a cocoon. Uh, you can decide you want to be a snake or a butterfly. Um, but either way, uh, there is this process of transition that happens for us in, in these cycles. And so even in my own life right now, like, um, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, but I, I have had this insane ability to be able to manifest over the last two years. And so I've changed my life from going to, from being single, from being broke, from being, um, you know, in a completely different career path and, um, homeless almost, you know, into a place where I have bought my own house. I have this loving, wonderful partner. I, I was supposed to be infertile. I have a baby, you know, just all of this stuff happened in a very short amount of time. And so that was that blooming butterfly phase of, you know, things are happening. I'm manifesting. I'm seeing the power of me stepping into who I am and what I'm supposed to do. And then I'm starting to see where that cycle is going to start again, where it's like, all right, well, you were a butterfly here, but now we're getting ready to change your wings again, basically. And so I'm feeling that, that pressure. I'm feeling those areas where, okay, challenges are starting to arise. Um, you know, people have challenges in their relationships or challenges in, in their ability to parent or challenges with their home life or their job or, you know, whatever. And then you see that come and go in cycles for, to me, for a reason, because there's no growth without crisis. So I watched over my life in the last 37 years and going, wow, like it's almost like clockwork every three years, this kind of cycle shows up and that it's, it's dutiful in its nature that it's happening for us instead of to us, that there is a change and a shift helping us level up in some way to, in order to create something new. And I very much believe that this is what we see also in our external world where, you know, everybody thinks that we're going through this really terrible time in our world, which is true. But it's as a result of all of this division, it's as a result of all of this change and hardship that we're going to, I believe in the future, create something far better than what we've had in the past. This is to dismantle all the shit (laughs) that's been going on for so long to get us to a better place. It's for our own expansion. And I think that while it's difficult in the moment to deal with because earth school is hard there is, there's so much benefit that comes out of it. If we can see it while it's happening, if we can put ourselves in that mindset while it's happening, there's so much to learn. Wow. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I'll feel like, I don't know how to say this. Um, I feel like I recognize those cycles, especially when I'm out of them. Um, Mm -hmm. but when I'm in them, I tend to go, Oh gosh, this again, I thought I was better. I thought I worked through this. Um, so I feel like that practice of grounding into having a bigger perspective is so special and important. Yeah. How do you, how do you do that? Cause it's also hard. <laughs> it's hell hard. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually working through something today, actually, um, where I am faced with some, something that's really triggering, uh, a behavior from a loved one that is reminding me of childhood again. And it's, it's, it it is something that I'm like, Ooh, you know, in the moment I'm feeling myself feel this rage of like what I felt like when I was a kid, when this person was, you know, acting out a certain way. And I I was in this moment, I keep asking myself, okay, what I'm supposed to learn, what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to learn? Um, in order to keep myself from, from being in that space. And so last night I was sitting in my bed and, and I was thinking about it and I had already done like, so when I get upset, I like to, um, monologue. (laughs) So I will, um, put on, on a voice note or something and just say everything I want to say to that person, regardless of how 
hurtful or ridiculous or upsetting or whatever, just to get it out of my body. And then I will listen to it until I feel like it's gone. And so I listened to it three or four or five times uh, before uh, I came home. So that way I didn't get on the phone and then yell at that person. <laughs> um, and then this morning I sat down and I wrote a letter to them and saying, you know, this is what, how this makes me feel. This is what this, you know, and that for me is energetically me working through um, mm -hmm. what I'm feeling. And then part of me, uh, you know, as someone who believes in manifestation and energy, me just putting that out there in the world, I think helps communicate what it is that I need to be to said without maybe actually saying it before the person is ready to hear it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when we're talking to people, this is just like obviously a situation, but sometimes when we're talking to someone and they're not ready to receive what it is that we're feeling yet, and we don't feel like the problem is resolved, then we will then feel offended by them not being able to get to the place where we're at right now. And so in, in that way, and also in the world, when like, you know, like, look at what's happening in our world right now, um, this is hurting all of our feelings and loads of us want to get online and be like, listen to this. And these people said this and look at the news and blah, 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 blah. And it's making me so upset that my uncle Fred is, you know, <laughs> and it's so much of this inner turmoil that we have that's triggering parts of us that are wounded or hurt or traumatized or unseen. And so the way that I get grounded is I sit down and I, I express that as much as I can in a safe space where I know that I'm heard because I'm here myself and, um, and find ways to acknowledge that, to transmute it. Um, uh, because I know that in, in my emotion or in my hurt or in my trauma and in my humanity, that, the other person or the news outlet or the, you know, whoever may yeah. not be able to receive what it is that I'm saying. And for us to believe that it is the other person's responsibility to give us that validity so we can feel better. I mean, you'll just, your whole life will be hinged on the external circumstances and what other, everybody else does in order for you to feel better. And as an empath, I just don't have the time. Like I don't have the time to waste, to wait for someone else to get, to catch up. So I can feel better. I need to do that for myself. That's yeah. how I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Answer your question. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's perfect. Oh, and um, that reminds me of something I wanted to touch on with you. Um, I think it was one of the first episodes of yours I had ever listened to. It was about the vaccine, but it wasn't about the vaccine. It was like yeah. about the like hatred and judgment that we have for either not getting it or getting it and like, you know, everything else yeah. that's been happening this year. Um, and your approach to that was just really, really wonderful. So I was wondering if you could maybe expand on that a little bit. I have to first remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I'm doing those podcasts, I'm channeling. So a lot of it's wow. coming through spirit. And so I don't actually remember a lot of what I'm saying, but I do remember wow. the sentiment, but very much so. In fact, I got my booster shot today. So, you know, this is very, <laughs> uh, yeah. very present. Yeah. Um, I think that there is, there's so much polarization about what people want to do with their bodies. And like, I, I, I think it's interesting how, um, one side has co-opted the, my body, my choice. And then on the other end, it's like my body, my choice for, you know, whether or not you want to have abortion versus a vaccine or whatever. Fine. So what's interesting to me, at least in my perspective, like we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic and for myself being a, a being of humanity and someone who also has a soul. Um, I believe in reincarnation. And so for me, it's not that deep. Like it's not that deep. Like if I decided to get it or, or I don't, and I die today or tomorrow, like, okay. Now, once I had a baby that changed, that changed significantly because it was like, now I need to protect my child. And so the, the aspects of all of that, that fear, it's like, we're all feeling the same thing. We're all trying to just figure out what's going to be best to keep us safe. And so for some people, that means not getting the vaccine. And for some people, that's like, that's a big deal. Some people are, are um, vaccine injured. Some people just have other beliefs about what vaccines can do. And then there's, you know, people who are in the very other far extreme on that side. And then there's the other side where it's like, okay, well, there are, you know, there are millions of people dying because this, this, the virus keeps getting or mutating or whatever, because of how many people are catching it, whatever. So there are extremes on both sides. And what my sentiment is, is like, we need to find a way to accept each other through this process, because 
we can think of it from a very human perspective and say like, Hey, if you don't get the vaccine, this thing is never going to go away. And the other people are like, Hey, if you get this vaccine, you're not going to elevate to 5d anymore or whatever the reason is. It is all of us just being afraid of, you know, <laughs> what the other party is going to do or not do and how that's going to affect us long-term. And so I was listening to, um, someone, I was very inspired by some of his work, uh, Matias de Stefano. And he talks about, and I'm probably going to butcher this somewhat, but this is the inspired thought that came from it for me is that division is, is necessary to our evolution and not opposition, but division. And so in the process of division, like we are in this, like when you think about a family unit, right? Like you're all unified sisters and brothers or whatever. At some point, someone's going to split off, find a partner and make a new family. That's how the family expands. And so at the same way in our cell reproduction, right? A cell divides to reproduce, right? So like in our world, we're sitting here in the midst of a divide. Like we're sitting here and forcing, you know, this kind of divide in order to reproduce something better. So here we have this system that is like chocked full of all of this polarity and, and yeah, it's intense. It's super uncomfortable. And you know, unfortunate that we have to go through this discomfort. This is just earth. We're super dense here. Okay. Um, but if we can, if we can come from a perspective of, you know what, this is what's necessary in order to elevate us as a human race, as a soul, as our purpose, you know, whatever we, for us to find better things to do there, uh, then <laughs> this is what's necessary. And I know that, that for a lot of people, they're not used to feeling discomfort. And so that makes it really hard for them. For those of us who suffer with anxiety, it's a very real thing. Um, I, I struggle with anxiety deeply and, and even worse now um, after having a very traumatic birth. And so loads of these things, this feeling of feeling unsafe constantly is, is taking a toll. And I'm sure a lot of people at this point are having like insane pandemic fatigue. Um, I am for sure. And so it, it makes sense while we're kind of all at the end of our rope, just waiting for something thing to kind of break so we can be in this position where we can get back to normal but newsflash we're not going back to normal we're not it's just not it's not going to happen all of the new variants coming up or whatever there's a reason for that because we're not going back to normal and there's new considerations that need to happen new establishments that are breaking down new like i mean look at what happened with black lives matter in 2020 right a lot of y'all just got to that party we've been living that party for a very long time and it's not a fun party so to to have to then it was, it was interesting because in 2020, that was when, um, my podcast really took off because I had made an episode about racism and, uh, I had a lot of light beans come to me and say, this is very divisive. And this is very, you know, <laughs> this is low vibrational energy. And I was like, well, you know, I'm black, so I have to deal with this anyway, whether or not you want to see it or not. So it's important because if we're all one here, then we need to all be looking at these things and seeing how can we find a way to make a better system. And so it is not about bypassing. It is all about dealing with our humanity. You can't be the spiritual being if you're not going to look at the human. So mm -hmm. it, this, this is a part of the game. If you don't want to be a part of this game and you think you're high flighting and above this stuff, you're not doing what you're here to do. You're, mm -hmm. you're missing the point and you will have to come back. <laughs> That's my mm -hmm. belief anyway, take it or leave it. So mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's the polarity that we're facing. That's, that's coming to a point and coming to a head, I think pretty soon that we're all trying to figure out how to make this better, how to make our world better. And without that crisis, there is no growth. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going to forecast that we're going to, this is going to be ongoing for the next five years. And so, and that's sucks to hear. Like, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, <laughs> Nostradamus or anything, but like, this is, this is what the trajectory looks like. And so if that is the case, then we will have to find better ways for our health. We have to find better ways for our treatment programs. We'll have to find better ways for our people to coexist. We'll have to find better ways to, to, com to communicate. We'll have to find better ways to find community. Um, I, I know for a lot of us, it's kind of given us an idea of like, mm, those are people that I don't want to be friends with anymore. Those, those are family members that I could deal without not seeing. Um, I kind of love that, like after I had the baby that I didn't have a thousand people coming to my house, it was, I mean, I'm a little bit more introverted, so there's that, but you know, and a lot of people struggled. So we had to do some deep dives during that time. And so 
I, it's, it's, it's being gracious and being kind and loving through what everybody's going through. It put us on a global scale and in a, in a way to be empathetic for everyone, everybody's going through this. And so for those people who have had the mentality that, you know, it's just everything for me and what I need to do for me or whatever, like they stick out like a sore thumb because we're in the same boat here. You can't look at the boat and say, Oh, look at their side of the boat. They have a hole. <laughs> like, I'm going to just watch them try to fix that or whatever. We're safe over here. No, we're in the same boat. So if that boat sinks, so does yours. So in that regard, we need to find a way to come together regardless of our stance on it. And I know that for this one, this is really highly charged because it's, it feels like it, it can't come together unless other people get on board, but yeah. this is the process of creation. We have to find a way to do that. Wow. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I think what really resonated with me was the fear part um and knowing like people are acting like this because they're afraid and I can't relate to how they're acting but I can relate to being afraid yeah. and I feel like that is such a such a powerful way to have empathy in those situations yeah absolutely okay. Thank you. um and I want to talk about manifestation as well you mentioned it a few times and yeah I feel like it's kind of a like buzzword or like a trendy topic and mm -hmm. But people don't necessarily always teach it very correctly or in a way that like is loving. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I was wondering maybe what that process of coming to your powers of being able to manifest was like. Absolutely. Um, so I love that you said that because I think manifestation in its first wave, right? It was, it came out like the secret. Oh my God, there's this secret. And <laughs> if you just <laughs> intend something and you think positively, then everything in your life can change. Yeah. And, and that's part of it. That is not the whole story or whole picture by any stretch. Um, so for me, we teach on a, a few courses on manifestation. We have uh, manifest you. And then we have me, I say, we, uh, I have a friend who, uh, Sharon Eskandani that we teach it together called manifest them trying to like calling your, your mate, your partner, basically. Um, but what I found through teaching manifestation and my own experiences is that manifestation is the process of healing yourself. And so the process of you healing yourself shows up in ways that, that your desires then come are more attracted to you. And so, um, what I think that often is missing in the manifestation process is that we don't acknowledge everyone's pain and we don't acknowledge that there is pain when you have a desire that is unmet. And there is pain when there is a, you know, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe you're looking for a different job or a certain amount of money that you need to be made or a partner or something like that. There's typically a void that comes in that says, ah, oh, I'm in desire of this thing. So manifestation is a process of receiving the thing, not in the sense of like, let me go get a Lamborghini and I need a yacht now. Although that may be some manifestation for some people, but moreover, it's about how you want to feel. So I want to feel safe. So I'm trying to manifest this particular job, or I want to feel creative. So I'm trying to manifest this particular opportunity or whatever. And so what we, I found is that if I can tap into the feeling of what it is I'm trying to manifest, then I can be freed of it. So the process of feeling freed of the lack of that feeling is what helps me heal. So if I, if I really break it down, um, I am in need of a partner. And I'm feeling really lonely and I've done this pandemic by myself and it's really hard to see people get married and you know, whatever. Okay. So say that's your situation. Um, that, that desire that shows up, especially the aching ones, the ones that are like, really like, uh, you know, this hurts to not feel this thing takes away from our ability to then connect to source connect to our expansion, connect to our learning, connect to and the ways that we need to elevate ourselves. And so with, you know, for myself, I know I went through that whole partner thing upon getting a partner, I was freed from those, that achiness that got in the way of me being able to do more of the spiritual work that I needed to do. Yeah. And so upon me recognizing I am deserving of having this type of partner. I recognize someone is out there who's going to love me like this. It helped bring to light what, what were my wounds were at. I had very much this, this idea, no one is going to be in my life that ever helps me. I'm unlovable. I have to do everything by myself. And upon realizing that I was going, oh, 
okay, like I'm deserving of having a partner in my life. I can open up space to be vulnerable enough to allow someone to help me in my life. I can rely on someone else. Like that's something I'm dealing with right now. Still, (laughs) I have a hard time relying on other people for things and feeling that I can trust them. And so that is, it's teaching me those things, you know? Um, so anyway, like that, that process of, of discovering those things, it's not even necessarily healing them, but just discovering them goes, oh, this is why I haven't had a partner in my life. Who's been X, Y, Z, or why it's been difficult for me to, to call somebody in, et cetera. Upon that realization for me, that's when the floodgates opened up. And then suddenly all these men were approaching me. And I was like, what the hell is going on? never had that in my life because I opened up energetically this, this understanding that, oh, I am deserving of love. It, 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 the manifestation itself helped point to a wound, the desire itself. I really want a partner made reflect on me why I thought I shouldn't have one. And so upon that integration happening, I opened myself up and said, oh, wait a minute. Okay. I am lovable. I can do this. I can do that. And then the partner came in and it was like, no problem. And the same thing with a, with a home. I want a home that I want to raise my daughter in. And I want a home that we have memories. And I want the Christmas house. <laughs> I always say that uh, <laughs> with the Christmas house, the house that everybody comes over for Christmas, you know, I want to host. And, um, and that meant that desire then called me to a higher level of what I needed to earn in order to do that. And I didn't think that that was possible. So what happened? I had to confront my money issues and what I thought was possible, what I thought I could do on card reading money. Like I bought this house on card reading money. That sounds ridiculous, right? Like my, my loan officer was like, I'm sorry, what do you do again? Like I had to submit so much paperwork. <laughs> they were like, this, this seems kind of weird. I don't know, but like, hmm, it's kind of stable. I guess. So it, it's, it, it was beyond the scope of what seemed normal. And it allowed me to go, okay, I, I'm a, a powerful ass bitch here. <laughs> you know, like I was able to do something that seemed like it was impossible. So it freed me from the need of it. And then it got easier and easier to go, hmm, well, maybe if I could do this, I could do that. If I could do this, I could do that. And it transcends past material items. It transcends past like our basic needs. And it starts to get into larger places. Like now for me, it's like, I want to make a huge impact on the world. Like I want to have these, you know, these things or these experiences or this comfort level or whatever. And, you know, as someone who grew up super poor with lights going off and us eating ramen, ramen for, you know, regularly and stuff like that, I, I shouldn't be someone who owns the home that I live in, has gone and had the experiences that I've had. Um, it's in, in, in our typecast society, like a lot of people who know me now would not guess that I would come from the background that I've come from. Mm-hmm. And so this, this learning of how to manifest is is so potent for us to be able to observe our own power. Wow. And, and in that, I've gotten to also see the way people disempower themselves. And that need that they have is so strong. And they're just so used to the need that it's difficult for them to change the programming. That's kind of where the secret gets it right. Is that mm-hmm. like, yeah, you need to think positive, your intention or whatever. The part that they get wrong though, is that there's layers to it. You can't just start off and be like, Hey, I want to be a millionaire, but you've had $7 in your bank account for the last month. It'll make you feel worse to try to kind of like say those mantras and stuff. When you know, how the hell is that going to manifest? You know, and there's like, then we have to talk about intersectionality, like black people or, you know, people, uh, uh, LGBTQ, you know, like people of all these different diversities that haven't gotten to see certain aspects of life available to their kind. And so that adds an added layer of visualization, like, or of trouble in visualization, trouble in perception, trouble in mentality. And then people at the top go, oh, well, your situation's like that because you can't think right. And it's bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a problem. And so we can look at and go, okay, well, what about the people who are in, impoverished over here? They didn't think themselves in that position, you know? And so I think that they miss that. And it's like, well, then how do you justify manifestation if some people end up over here and then some people end up super, you know, famous or rich or whatever. And the, 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 the wealth gap and disparity is insane. Um, one of my, my, the girl who I teach with Sharon says, why is it that white men can just fly to the moon whenever they feel like it? Yeah. Because, because no one told them they couldn't. No one's ever told them they couldn't. They're in a, a, a foot race to get to the moon and their penis playing. And like, did you see Bezos is playing? 
It's like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> like, you know, like, cause no one told them they couldn't. Yeah. So in that way, like if you've been, if you're in a, in a typically marginalized community or so on, like it, that dream is harder for you to conceptualize. And that's where there's an added layer of difficulty and manifestation that is not being taught. And so we teach that a lot because it's important, but also like, okay, think of women, like women who wanted to become CEOs and things like that. Everybody can, I mean, everybody, everybody who identifies as a woman, um, if we take race out of it, then that's another layer that was, had, was hard at some point that then got transcended and is still transcending. So it's stuff like that, that I feel is important to mention when we talk about manifestation, because if we negate the fact that we all have different contracts that we came in to learn. And we have all different levels of a way in which we're trying to assert our own power and our own abilities and whatever, then we will isolate, uh, you know, people out like if we don't acknowledge that, you know, and we'll keep them in a place that says, oh, sorry, you don't belong here. (laughs) Manifestation works for me, but it doesn't work for you. (laughs) Um, And that's not. Yeah. Wow. That was such a beautiful explanation. And I can't wait to listen back <laughs> so that I can like <laughs> absorb that a few times over. Um, and what is the class club that you teach? Uh, manifest them. Okay. You can go to manifestthem.com and that's where it lives now. <laughs> okay, great. And that'll be in the show notes too. Cause yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure that's going to be a very, very powerful class. Thank you. I mean, you just explained. I think it is. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm a little biased. <laughs> I mean, you explained that in 15, 10 minutes, but if you teach a whole class, I can't imagine what else is in there. It's an online course. So you can take it at any time self-taught. We already recorded it, but it's, it's a lot of time uh, getting into the root of, you know, what's stopping your, you and your manifestations from a perception point of view, but also from an internal point of view. Like when we look at our trauma and the things that we've, uh, you know, incurred, like I have severe anxiety. Uh, I get this from my mom. <laughs> so I'm concerned, concerned, I guess I always say, um, about so many things going wrong. And then I have the fear that, oh no, if I'm afraid of this thing happening, then won't I manifest it? Oh no. Um, when I had my traumatic birth, I was afraid that I manifested that because I was so afraid that this is what was going to happen. And then there's all this guilt that happens behind that. And you feel like you're the source and the reason why everything goes wrong in your life. And it's like, well, how can you pull yourself up from that? How do you recover from that kind of thought? No way. Like I I refuse to believe that there is a law uh, that exists that keeps us in that type of cycle. Um, We're more powerful than that. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. I feel like that's, those are all the issues I've always had seeing manifestation Mm -hmm. and the law of attraction. So I really love that. Well, you have such a nuanced way of thinking about everything. And that's what I love about (laughs) The way you approach things. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to have it's, that mindset. It is hard. <laughs> it's hard being me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and so I wanted to touch on something else as well. That's like the opposite, but the same, uh, which is surrender. Because mm-hmm. you have to like accept that you have like control and power, quotes and quotes, but then also like accept that you don't have anything like no control, no power. And so, yeah. How do you balance those two things? So manifestation and surrender to me go hand in hand, um, because the, the manifestation portion is the desire. So nobody's ever telling you to get rid of your desire, unless your desires are something that's not best suited for you. Um, like I desire to be with this very toxic partner who continues to abuse me. Well, there, there may be some reason why you want to continue to manifest that that may not be good for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So the desire is important, but then when we talk about surrender, I tend to talk about surrender more in an expectation timeline kind of way, because we tend to go, okay, I want this manifestation. And then we attach an outcome to it. And when we attach the outcome to it, well, guess what? We have then put it in a box of control. So we don't allow the manifestation to bloom and branch in the way that it was meant to. Rather, we say, oh, if it doesn't happen by this time, it's not happening. So it affects our ability to manifest whatever that thing is because we've decided that it, when it should happen. So the desire is true. The desire is always true, you typically. Um, but it is the process of surrender that allows us to, to let it go. And that to me is a necessary process of, of manifestation. Like at some point I got to, and it was so funny because for years, years, Samantha, I was like, I want this partner. I want this person or whatever. I was going on thousands of dates and 
<clears throat> doing whatever I could, um, you know, I was in that do energy <laughs> mm. of trying to manifest this person, but it was more like a scheming. Like if I do this, then this can happen. If I make this happen, if I go on this many dates, then by the sheer number, I might run into somebody. And in that energy and in that urgency, there's no trust. I'm not telling the universe that I trust it. I'm not telling the universe that I like energetically, at least that I think that this thing is going to happen. I'm going after it like gangbusters. And that, that energy says, okay, well, you know, imagine a cat, like you running after a cat, what's a cat going to do? Well, <laughs> out here done. So I kind of started to think about it like that. Like <clears throat> I can desire the connection with that cat, but I need to sit back and watch it come to me. And so, yes, action is required. But when it comes to surrender, um, particularly when it came to my relationship, I had to just kind of throw my hands up and go, okay, I know that this is out there. And I believe that this is something I deserve. And it's something that I, I know is going to come into my life. And I can have no control over when it's going to happen, but I believe that it is. So I'm at rest. Mm. I'm relaxed. I feel good about this. And it's so funny. At first I had this nasty pain in my tummy because it was like, I'm letting go of the, the thing I'm trying to hold on to so tightly. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, to release control is painful especially when you've had your grip super tight for a very long time. You're and so, <laughs> so in that process, um, I remember it so vividly because it was February and um, I'll try to tell you the short version of the story, but I went to Bali uh, for, for two months to do some healing work on myself. And I was like, I'm just tired of striving. And I feel like nothing's ever going the way I want it to. Uh, and I need rest. I need time to just heal. So I went to Bali and, um, the third day I was there, um, there was this man who was trying to take a very drunk woman home with him forcibly. Oh, wow. And this is happening in public, but everybody's sloshed. So like, nobody's really paying attention and I don't really drink. And so I was fully aware of what was going on. And so this woman was essentially hiding under a table, trying to get away from this, this person. And he kept trying to coax her anyway. So I about lost my shit on this person. And I start like, Hey, get out of here. Leave her alone. Hey, do you need help? You know? And she's telling me she needs help. Um, but she's clearly, you know, like, like off balance the whole deal. And he keeps trying to pull, pull her away. And I, I swat his hand, like back yeah. up. Like, I'm about to get the police. Or I'm going to talk to somebody or whatever. And it gives her just enough time to break free because he was holding her arm. So she took off <clears throat> and he sees that he's lost his wounded deer. And this man punches me straight in the chest. Oh my God. Like full force knocks me back, knocks the wind out of my chest. And I just, I mean, just in sh sheer shock. First of all, we're looking for where the girl is, but second, like to, you know, make sure she was safe. But I was like, man, I'm about to get in a full on fight with a grown ass man. And so I walked out of there and I thought, this is my third day here. This is unsafe. Like, you know, and I went home and I, and I cried and I just, I cried so hard because the energy was just like, so painful. And someone, uh, one of my friends who I was telling the story or whatever, and they were like, wow, it's so crazy that you went there to heal your heart. And then someone punches you right in the chest. I wonder what that's about. And wow. I was like, Hmm. Hmm. Cause I, I believe in signs like crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. so here I am starting to express all of this heart pain that I've been having for years of just how men have disappointed me and men, this and men, that and unreliable, all of it started to come up. And so a month and a half later, I had this healing session by a Reiki practitioner and, um, you know, to heal my heart, to just kind of open myself up to that vulnerability. And, um, it was in that session that I had a dream about David, my current partner. Oh I knew exactly gosh. what he looked like. I have pictures that I have screenshotted where I was like, I think he looks like this, um, where he comes to me in a dream where there's people protesting and he's in the front of the, the charge and he comes upstairs and talks to me or whatever. Anyway, the whole thing, he tells me to wait for him in the dream. Oh and I was gosh. like, okay, you know, that's kind of weird. <clears throat> so upon waking up, I was like, yo, I had this crazy dream. <laughs> Um, you know, he kind of looks like this. This is what he said. Blah, blah, blah. And so my friend was like, please remember this. Cause I think that this might be your, your, your sign. And it was so much healing that had happened. Like I also had this, um, you know, Vipassana that I was sitting in the yoga class where I remembered 
um, you know, as a nine-year-old that I couldn't ask my parents for help for money. Um, mm-hmm. I was like in gymnastics and they ended up making me quit gymnastics because they couldn't afford it anymore. The whole thing. Okay. So all this stuff starts coming out in this one trip. And when I, when I acknowledged all of it, I was like, okay, I recognize that there's this person that I'm supposed to connect with that I've been looking for, for a long, my heart has longed for this kind of love. Yeah. So now that I know that it's out there, I don't know the timeline, but now that I know that it's out there, I need to just relax. I need to just let it come to me because anything else I was doing before was not working. And then after that, opening my heart up all of a sudden, like I said earlier, all these men started approaching me. Hey, can I get your number? I think you're the one. It was so weird. And this <laughs> scope of a month, like having all these suitors, if you will, was weird. Um, <laughs> and then COVID hit and I was isolated and I was like, I'm single and I'm isolated and I'm not going to be able to meet anyone. And now there's this deadly virus out there. How the hell is that going to happen? And then George Floyd happened and I got on Bumble, not to date, but to, to see how black men were doing because- like I know my community and I know they don't get therapy. And so I was like, let me just talk to some people and see how they're doing. And that's, <laughs> I swipe and I see David and uh, we get together for a coffee and I see him as soon as I see him in person, it's like, I recognized him. It was like, that is the person from the dream after the interview, I'll show you the picture. Um, and so it was this, this just reckoning of like, why was I just spinning my wheels, trying so hard to make this thing happen when in fact, the desire that I've put out there when upon releasing it, upon surrendering it, it was the easiest thing for it to come to me. It was so easy. It was just like, and actually, in fact, I prayed for it to be easy. I was like, make it easy, make it so glaringly apparent that I'll have no doubts about it. And so he just walked right into my life. And I was like, hello, <laughs> we've been waiting for you. Very easy. And, wow. and you know what? And I'll, I'll say this. The difficulty is always in the time. It is always us doubting that it's coming. It is always us scheming and trying to make it happen faster. It is always us according to our timeline and when we think we're too old and all that stuff. That's what gets in the way and makes it hard. If we had just extended our are, you know, for instance, I'm in this process of trying to increase my mediumship and being better at that. And it's like, it's not happening fast enough. (laughs) I want to be a pro today. And (laughs) it's like, well, you know, it could be in 10 years before, you know, that really kind of dawns itself. And I have this vision of myself. um, I keep seeing this playing, you know, a picture that I'm going to be like an Oprah at some point. And I'm like, it should be today. Like, why is it happening today? Why aren't my views up? Why am I this up? You know, whatever your ego gets really attached to those, those markers as validity. And it's like, pshh. When it's supposed to happen, it'll happen. Obviously action is required, but not the scheming that we do when we're trying to force something into being. And that is how surrender plays into manifestation. Thank you so much. And that story about David is so crazy and so cool. I mean, there there are crazier stories I haven't said, but (laughs) I mean, that's, I mean, that's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Um, And I have one more question if you're okay on time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just checking. Um, you did a couple episodes that I just loved so much. Okay. Well, I love all of them <laughs> as I'm like revealing, <laughs> um, but it was about when you feel disconnected from your spirituality. And I think it might've mm-hmm. been when you were pregnant and you felt like an imposter. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering, I know people in my community like identify as spiritual, but there's like so much pressure to do it a certain aesthetic way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just wondering if you have any advice for people who don't feel connected to their spirituality right now. Yeah. Um, I think that what makes us one second, can you pause it? Sorry. No, that's okay. All right. So I think that the biggest thing about being able to connect to your spirituality is being able to accept yourself where you're at as a human. I think that people think spirituality is supposed to look a certain way. And because of that, we put ourselves in these boxes of like, I want to be the mystic. I want to be, you know, the tarot reader. I'm supposed to be Zen and love and light all the time. And with that, we forget that like, we're also human. Like we're also supposed to have real emotions and we're also supposed to feel certain things. And we we tend to, like I said, gaslight ourselves out of feeling like that's our emotions are, are okay. You know? And I think that that to me, like, especially while I was pregnant, 
I was feeling like, I don't feel as spiritual and I don't want to meditate. My body hurts all the time. And it was really forcing me to become grounded. And what I realized, you know, about grounding and what grounding really means is, is acceptance. <laughs> uh, as accepting ourselves and figuring out ways for us to, to be in a place where we can feel like, I would say the full expression of our own humanity. And that requires us to be able to accept the ups along with the downs, the high vibe. Oh, bless you. Sorry, we have my daughter sitting. <laughs> um, our high vibe along with our low vibes. And mm -hmm. I think that that was what I was struggling with the most is that I was like, I feel so low vibe and, and upset and uncomfortable. And, you know, and it was like a true lesson of trying to figure out how do you just be? Can you just be? Can you, is it okay for you to be this human who's not feeling great right now and have acceptance for that person, have grace for that person? And that was challenging because I was like, I'm supposed to be Zen and I'm supposed to be this spiritual leader and, and I feel like shit. <laughs> and so, but that's a part of it. Like we're supposed to learn how to do that part too. And so if you're having trouble connecting with your spirituality, see if you're having trouble connecting to your humanity, that's usually a sign. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so is there anything that you wanted to add before we close? I would just say, especially right now, if you're someone who is struggling with anxiety and a lot of fear and feeling just like, where are you, you know, trying to find your place in the world, give yourself a breath right now <laughs> and give yourself a break. This is, this is a part of it. This is the experience you came here for. This is the process and, and how you're learning how to evolve. And so, you know, while it's always great to have the good times, the bad times serve their purpose too. And while I know that's challenging, <laughs> um, it's important to our growth. There is no growth without crisis. So find a way to accept where you're at and give yourself grace. And I think that that's the best thing you can do for yourself right now. Thank you. I also received some of that wisdom too. Oh yeah, me too. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. Um, and so every guest has a little challenge to send our listeners home with something, a practice or a resource that you love. So I'd love for you to give us our weekly challenge. My challenge. Hmm. Or resource. Resource. Um, you know, actually, where is that book? <laughs> Um, I would say a challenge. I mean, a challenge is, is to give yourself grace this week. Like give yourself an unbounding amount of grace. Find a time and a space for yourself to sit down and say, I forgive myself for X, whatever the thing is. I forgive myself for not working out this morning. I forgive myself for yelling at my kid. I forgive myself for having these thoughts about my partner or um, not getting the work done that I wanted to or overworking myself or, you know, for not making space for myself. If you can come to a place to give yourself that type of grace, it's a good practice to start. Um, I did it today. I went to Chick-fil-A and I was like, oh, I give myself grace for eating food that doesn't support my body right now. <laughs> um, cause I'm, you know, trying to be healthy. Um, so, you know, just things like that. I think that we're so much, we live so much in the should, I should do this. I should be this. And I should, you know, that we, we kick ourselves out of the present and we live so much in this, like, I'm not my best or I should be better. And that's, it's just an energy. I try to use the, like, not use the word should as much as I can, because it is just this, this judgy, like, yeah. <laughs> you did this wrong and this is what you should have done. Um, so imagine that word as, you know, an, an aunt you don't like <laughs> and just say, Hey, fuck up. You know, like just not, not, not listen to that right now. I think yeah. more of us, it would, it would eliminate a lot of our anxiety about feelings of what we have done in the past or what we couldn't help in the present. Well, that's beautiful. Thank you. Um, oh, and lastly, how can people find you? So manifest them is one of your amazing classes. Yeah. Um, and you're offering well, I'll just let you, <laughs> I'll just let you do it. <laughs> yeah. Hold on one second. Let me go give her back. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, you can find me at the lovely uh, where I offer, um, links to all our courses and things like that. You can also find a lot of my workshops at spiritual shit school.com. And then you can find our dedicated manifest them course at manifest them.com. Cool. 
and you have a Patreon as well, right? Oh, yes. You can go hang out with us at patreon.com slash the lovely Leah. We have monthly workshops um, and I put loads of, you know, extra content on there that you can't see on the, the you know, before the paywall. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and is there an option to work with you one-on-one at all? Um, currently we have like a spiritual mentorship program. It's full at the moment. It's, I only take three people, um, a season, uh, because it's, it's pretty intensive and it's one-on-one, like we do every week and we get in and we're trying to figure out actually, by the time this airs, we will be opening up our next season. So, hmm. um, but you'll have to just inquire on the website. There is a link there as well, um, to just help people figure out what their gifts are and find ways to, it's like a, a mentorship. I'm helping coach you, but also be someone to stand and support you through your growth process of learning who you are as a soul or walking on this earth and how to accept your human while you're doing it. So just light stuff, light, stuff. <laughs> light yeah, easy nothing, stuff, nothing crazy. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. appreciate it.